Good afternoon. I'm Andrew Stewart. I'm the subject librarian for life and physical sciences here at Alden Library, and I'm happy to welcome you to um, our first scholarly communications conversation. Um, what is an ORCID ID and why do I need one? Um, and the format of the workshop will be basically be a workshop. It'll be I uh, have a short presentation about the various author IDs and then there'll be time at the end for folks to actually register for an ARC ID and move forward with using it. And as I said in this workshop, I'll discuss the reason for the development of author IDs and why these IDs are important in their uses. And four major IDs, the ORC ID, Google Scholar ID, Scopus Author ID, and Web of Science Researcher ID, and I'll show examples of the, the materials that folks can see from that. And I'll give folks an opportunity at the end to create and register for your ORC ID. Our author ID is basically developed from the need to standardize authors. The what was Science Citation Index, now Web of Science indexes authors based on the article with no standardization because the materials are input into the database through optical character scanning. So whatever's on the article is what's there. You get different authors, for example, W. Smith, W. E. Smith, William Smith. Problems developed obviously with common researcher names like William Smith and Robert Doe and Jane Doe. And also there are problems for international researchers due to cultural differences in name order and inconsistent uses of in middle initials. And research growth over the years with more and more and more articles published and the growth of monitoring author impact called for name standards or some standardization. I think librarians and publishers particularly moved in that direction. And author IDs offer the solution of a standard ID that distinguishes one researcher from all others, um, both globally and in particular systems. ORC, the ORC ID is a specific system that's researcher um, agnostic and worldwide. And the other IDs are based on a particular system such as the database Scopus or Web of Science or the Google Scholar database. And they allow for verification and tracking of your institutional affiliations, um, update up-to-date author publication records because they can automatically update your publications when they're added to the databases. Um, they can connect existing publications and research and track existing grants and allow you to build collaborations with other researchers by searching in those databases. The ORC ID, the Open Research and Contributor ID, is an open source single ID that to link all scholarly work together. Individuals register for the ID, which is free, and then can use it in publication submissions, um, in their email signature and other places and share it with other authors can be added to your email signature, put in your publication and grant submissions and placed in any profile on the web. And the system allows for automated linkages and updates for activities and affiliations. And the ARC ID is free to the researcher and is supported by a consortium of research institutes and universities and publishers around the, con the world. And you can basically search orcid.org for orc IDs to build collaborations. And here is an example of uh, an orc ID for an Ohio researcher, Alicia Stigal, in the Department of Geological Sciences. And we can see in her record the orc ID and also alternative names that she's known by, links to 
her lab website and her Ohio University faculty page, research keywords for her research, other IDs, and she has the researcher ID and the Scopus author ID in her ARC ID record. It shows her education and her current affiliations, as well as, in this case, the screenshot I took showed the first 50 of the 62 publications she has, so that um, that makes that information available. It also shows the search box up here where you can search for other researchers in ARC ID. The Google Scholar ID is a little bit broader. It's created from your Google Scholar profile after searching in Scholar. You can gather all of your publications and then have your most cited publications listed first. And your H index is automatically calculated. The H index is an author level metric that measures research quality. H stands for the number of articles that have been cited H number of times. An H index of 30 means that the author, for example, has published 30 articles that have been more cited more than 30 times. And the H index that's in Google Scholar may be somewhat higher than other IDs as Google collects a broader range of materials and has different definitions for citations than the Scopus database or Web of Science has, for example. And this is an example of a Google Scholar profile for Sarah Wyatt, a faculty member in environmental and plant biology. And we see that her most cited article is from 1999 and it's been cited 258 times. It also shows the number of citations over the years and we can see that Dr. Wyatt's research H index has dropped a little bit, probably because she's now chair of the cellular and molecular biology program here at OU and isn't um, doing as much research. It also shows the collaborators that she has, as well as a link for you to get your own profile. And the Google Scholar ID and the ones following Web of Science and Scopus are both based on records that are in the databases. Um, so if you don't have publications yet, you can create a profile, but you may, may, may not be able to create an ID from that. The Scopus author ID is automatically created for every author indexed in Scopus, so that you have to have publications that are indexed in Scopus in order to have the ID. You can claim your ID and correct your publication list, make other corrections in the, the record, and the ID provides linkage to Scopus site score and other impact measurements. And this is a, an example of a Scopus profile for Brian McCarthy, the Associate Dean for Research in the College of Arts and Sciences. And we can see here that the Scopus ID, it also would allow him to, if he had an ORC ID, connect it to this ID. And it shows his research metrics that he's um, been, had 101 publications cited 3,088 times, and he has an H index of 32. And it graphs his publications and shows the most important topics that he's talked about. Um, and also begins the list of publications. In order to claim your, your um, Scopus ID, you actually have to create an account in Scopus, which is not a particularly onerous detail. So. And the final ID is Web of Science Researcher ID, which was formerly Researcher ID, but it's been absorbed in the, the website which also deals with peer review and scholarly impact called Publons, which was purchased by Clarivate Analytics, the company that produces Web of Science. 
and authors can create their Publons ID and integrate your Web of Science Index publications, and it includes links to citation metrics for from Web of Science. So this is an example of a Publons record for Peter Young, Distinguished Professor of Physics here at Ohio University, and it shows I've focused on the metrics page, which shows his impact over time and his publications and citations and his H index of 48. So, and the reviews that he's that have been verified in Publons for his peer review. So there are other there are other author IDs in Academia EDU and ResearchGate, which are primarily um, social network sites um, that also share articles, but they also collate index uh, impacts, excuse me. And you can also create a, an ID in LinkedIn for your publications as well as your activities. So, so that, that's really the end of my publication uh, presentation. I, it's re really relatively short. Um, for more information about the IDs, you can go to my, my and Hannah Schmillen's scholarly research metrics um, libguide.